All right, welcome here into another episode of the News for Jacks podcast. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside Justin Barney. Uh, Justin, at some point, it sounds like a broken record. We're just going to replay our pod from the last two, three weeks? Yeah, probably. Same, same, same thing. Same. Wow. Close loss after close loss. Jaguars are 2-8. and 2-8, and eight, but the good thing is there's one more game in the Dubai. So ah, so then there's a break. Positive thinking. So they're going to go up to Detroit. I don't see any way they win at Detroit. And you know, I saw a Pete Prisco uh, post on social media earlier today. Yeah. It, it totally hit home. The worst loss to me in Jaguars history. As a fan at this time in 95, so they went up to Detroit. Expansion year, they lost 44 nothing to the Lions. Not uh, A loss is a loss, but how that loss transpired... Wayne Fonts, they had Detroit drove the field again. Five, six minutes left to go in the game. Sure. On the goal line, first and goal, they take knees. 44. Instead of going in the end zone, kicking a field goal, they just took knees at that point. That's That, to me, was the most humiliating loss in Jaguars. It's pretty embarrassing. History. That's bad. That was an expansion year team, and Pete said that today, and it just brought back so many memories because Jacksonville's ready to go back up to Motown this week. Yeah. And play the Lions. The Lions are going to run through them and then get them mercifully to the bye week. Yeah. Changes in the bye week, perhaps? Wishful thinking. I think it's wishful thinking. The fact they're coming off a 12 7 loss to the Vikings defense played phenomenal. Yeah. They got beat by a rookie kicker making his first appearance in the game. Hey, he was and on the money, though. He just kept putting them through the uprights. He was. Great game for uh, for him, but Jacksonville's offense, time again. This this, this team, I have no hope for them. I, I think it's officially time to say this team is broken you beyond. still had hope? Be, broken beyond what this current regime can fix. I think, that here, and this is just me spitballing on, on this, but I, here's what I think is going to happen. I think over the the, hall, the the final stretch of the season, they're going to win a couple games, realistically. I mean, they play the Titans twice. Yep. Even if you split with the Titans, you play the Raiders. You could possibly beat the Raiders. The Jets ain't much better. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's a couple of games they're going to win in there. Uh, before you get to that, my gut would tell me that, that uh, Trent Baalke is going to get the Dave Caldwell treatment. Dave got shown the door mm-hmm. early. I think Trent's going to do the same thing. I think Doug is going to get an opportunity to save himself because just historically shot is patient. So I think he's going to try and allow Doug the opportunity to separate himself. Now, hasn't he fired two coaches in the middle of the season? Shot Khan, Gus Urban. Bradley, and Urban. Yes. Right? So he's fired two in the middle of the season. Yes. Um but historically, even, I mean, Doug Marone was a one-win coach, and he let him hang on. Yeah. So I do think historically Shot has been patient, yeah. too patient probably at uh, many times. But I'm, I'm with you. I do think, I think Trent Baalke deserves more of the blame for this roster construction and some of these contracts than, than Doug. And Doug was, is not without fault. He's had back-to-back no. nine-win seasons. Um, but for whatever reason, the team has – had about a 15 to 17 game window where they were one of the best teams in the league. You finish 2022 the way you did on that tear. You were two and six at one point. You finished nine and eight, and then you start the next year eight and three. So you had a, a really, really what boiled down to about a year of solid quality football for the Jaguars. And the front end of that and the back end of that of what we're seeing now has been you can't make any kind of explanation or defense of it been bad awful football it's just been ugly i mean I, some of it's doug i mean a lot of it's doug look trent's done some good things but at the same time he spent high draft picks on positions that aren't crucial mm-hmm. that uh things that you don't see hence why like i mean we've already reached this point of the season so <laughs> i mean right now if the season ended the jaguars would be the number one overall pick they'd have it in the bucket uh, third time in five years, and I, I know right now the betting favorite is Travis Hunter. That's what everybody wants, and that's great, but when was the last time a corner went number one overall in the draft? Can, can Travis Hunter block for quarterback? Can he, uh, can he short that left tackle, right tackle spot? So uh, You need a lot of reinforcements on this team, and, and while I would love Travis Hunter and You need a corner. The Jaguars yeah. do need a corner. In, in addition, because they already have Tyson, and you got Jarring, in, but – you're going to need a third guy. you got to have three corners in the league. But going a corner number one overall would be 
I feel like going running back. <laughs> that, be, that, that's something Trent Baalke would do. I mean, I, no, I'm like, I, they used a top 100 pick on a tight end. You already had Evan Ingram. Mm-hmm. You used a top 100 pick on a linebacker with Devin Lloyd, which has re- yielded middling results. I mean, there, there's been a handful of these picks that Trent has had, made at positions that aren't crucial. Handful. I mean, you, you also armful. You know, I mean, armful. You also took Travis Etienne in the first round, a first round running back. That doesn't happen in today's NFL. I mean, these are he's taking picks, valuable picks, and using them on positions that have been devalued in the way today's mm-hmm. football is played. And then you wonder why the Jaguars have deficiencies at crucial positions, offensive line, for instance. So that, that's where the the roster management. He's done some good things. Yeah. He found Ventrell Miller. We'll right. give him credit for that. Like, give him credit where credit's due of finding guys like Brian Thomas Jr. fell into his lap, picked up some picks on the way to doing it. I mean, Ventrell Miller, a late round draft pick that many of us said, hmm, I don't know about that. It worked out. Um, so there, there's a handful of things that he has done yeah. well, but it's the things that where he missed, where you paid Foyer and then you draft Devin Lloyd and Chad Muma, which to us said, all right, you're mm-hmm. going to shell off Foyer and move those two in. Oh, wait, you missed on both of them, so then you re-up Foyer. Like it, it's those sorts of moves that don't make sense. Um, you pay and, Tyson Campbell too early. You pay Trevor too early. Um, a, lot of, a lot of whiffs. Josh yeah, Hines Allen. I'm okay with the Tyson one. I, I, I fundamentally am okay with Tyson. Um, Tyson's a very good player who – on the open market would command a much higher dollar. Possibly if he was healthy, which he he hasn't been this year. Uh, He's missed quite a bit of time. His last year was terrible uh, because he was injured. So the the health portion of Tyson, the skills don't worry me. The hamstrings have been the only problem. It's it's been the ability to stay healthy. And uh, Josh Hines Allen's another one. He had one tackle against the Vikings on Sunday. Um, You look at metrics and he's, 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 better in some areas, worse in others. He compiled pressure after pressure. The problem was that the secondary didn't give him any help, and who else was giving him any pressures? Like Trayvon Walker, for a large part of the game, pass rush rise was not there. Sam Darnold was harassed, mostly Josh Allen. It was amazing how how mobile Sam Darnold was. He was I don't crushed. remember that Sam Darnold running for no, his life like man, that. But there he was, was so many plays yesterday yes. where you're like, Man, Devon Hamilton's going to drag him down, and boom, he just takes off. I, there was probably four sacks yesterday Jacksonville's defensive line should have had. Yes. And Darnold just squirted out of there. Yep. I, I don't remember Darnold being that mobile or that uh, – just the ability to escape. He was an escape artist yesterday. Had it, one sack He made it work. Yesterday. Josh, Josh Hines-Allen had a good game. He impacted the game. He, he whipped Cam's butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He whipped Cam up and down throughout that game. So while, no, the stat sheet, the box score won't say Josh Hines-Allen impacted the game, on Sunday he was worth the money. Um, And there have been a couple other games like, well, you pay the guy that, you expect a big double-digit sack season, you expect what you got from him last year. And and that that hasn't happened. Um, And he's been maybe a slow start to the season, but – I mean, when the secondary is giving up as many passing yards as they are, which means guys are open so quickly and defenses are able to not only – like, I remember back to training camp, they were saying nothing cheap and nothing deep. Well, they're giving up something cheap, everything cheap and everything deep. So it's like how much time – like, it's amazing that Trayvon Walker has been able to get the number of sacks that he's gotten because – there's no interior pass rush to speak of. Like, it doesn't exist. Eric Armstead, they got him playing more edge than defensive tackle. Mason Smith has been a non-factor and hasn't been active mm-hmm. more games than he has. Um, you got Jordan Jefferson playing, who he, he's shown some good yeah. things as a run stuffer, but still not. A, I mean, he wasn't drafted to be a pass rusher. That wasn't what he was in college. Uh, Devon Hamilton... Uh, while you can see the quick trigger off the ball, I mean, he's really not an yeah. impact pass yes. rusher. hasn't been. Um, Tyler Lacey's playing meaningful reps. Jeremiah Ledbetter's playing meaningful reps. But the pass rush from the inside of the line it hasn't been there. Um, when we talked about the interior pass rush in training camp and in the offseason, it was, well, Eric Armstead's going to be there mm-hmm. at defensive tackle. That's going to help. Oh, wait a minute. They decided they were going to play Eric at edge. Almost <laughs> exclusively. This team, this, this year has Balky been yeah. uh, just a, a microcosm of what this franchise has been for 30 years. For, for 
a large part. Now, it's been good years. They have, they've had good years. Not, not all 30 years have been a wash. But the dysfunction of this season reminds me, not, not the head coach, not with, but it reminds me of um, the, the Urban Meyer season where just nothing was going wrong. And I, and I don't say that uh, not at all saying Doug is Urban, but just the, how things didn't go right. The Trevor interceptions that you're throwing in right into the end zone, just the dysfunction, that the, the harmony isn't there on this year's team like it wasn't back then. And whatever it is, whatever the case may be, Shot has been patient, gave everybody time. In, in If Urban's not groping co-eds and kicking kickers, he probably gets to uh, yeah. the end of his first season. So Shot has been very patient, but for whatever reason, I, I blame lies with everybody in order to say yes. from I, I don't necessarily pin it on Shad because you're, you're bringing back a coach that had uh, turned chicken salad, you know, chicken S-H-I-T into chicken salad mm-hmm. in the 2022 season. Playoffs, you thought they had the needles pointing up. It fell off last year. You made some changes. Shad wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. But at some point, you have to look, I think, internally, not just the coaching staff, but the guy, the general manager who's making this roster, looking at some of these contracts, some of these draft picks that aren't panning out, and say, Trent, appreciate you for what you've done. Head back to San Francisco. You're not here in Jacksonville anymore. And sweep the floor with Trent. Get some new brain trust in there. Well, the problem is, like, even if he can't, with the history that the Jaguars have in the past, in really 20 years, you, you can't turn it into a franchise that fires coach after coach after one season or after one bad season because then he's going to struggle to attract mm-hmm. a coach. Um, and, and so he has to show some of that patience. And then, like, Trent, again, to his faults, built a team that won back-to-back winning seasons, something that Jacksonville hadn't done in a long time. I mean, it, he's hit on more draft picks than he's missed. I don't I mean not, not star caliber hits maybe on, on as many as you'd like. Right. But solid players, NFL players, guys with potential. I mean, it, the problem is that that is more indicative of the history of how bad things have been than necessarily how good Trent has been. Like, Trent has been average. Yes. Um, the problem is that the team has been below average right. for years. So when there's a years. little bit of progress from it, it's like they – You're comparing it to the history, and you're yeah, like, you're, oh, yeah. wait, you know. It's better than history has been, but the history has been pretty darn bad. The, the history has been, been very bad. bad. Like, I was, I was going back through the draft history, and I just threw the sticky note away with the number on it, and I said, okay, let's go since 2000. How many times has this team picked in the top ten? Too many. <laughs> Too many. I mean, I, it, yes. it, it's a much lower number when you say the times they weren't in the top ten. And, and the it, thing it, with those top ten picks is did nothing that with them. 80% of them have been crap picks. Bortles, bad. I don't care. Hey, don't how, talk about the boat. Come I don't, on now. I know he's beloved in Jacksonville just for his persona, but he was not a good quarterback. Uh, I mean, Jalen Ramsey, you let him walk. Fournette, bad. Sit bad. Had produced good seasons, but was not good what you expected. Good yeah. season, and you let him, you let him walk. C.J. Henderson. No, yeah. Oh my gosh, C.J. Henderson to me is <laughs> in the conversation for the worst pick ever, worst draft pick, first round draft pick ever by the Jaguars. Yeah, and that that's a very uh, tough yeah. crown. And, and that's a. Not good. That cornerback class was bad that year. But yeah. CJ was. I mean, Jeff Okuda at least is a NFL yeah. player. Yeah, he's a drifter, though. You mm-hmm. pick him third overall and you expect him to be a, a, a linchpin for a defense. He, Okuda's been bad. Okuda is at least starting. Yeah, true. He has is, he is started for multiple teams. CJ Henderson is barely on rosters. Yeah. But when you look at Jacksonville, LaVisca Chenault, the guy should be a, a second round pick. You're thinking this guy. I need to draft the second round pick, and he needs to be an impact guy. Maybe not from day one, but middle, midway through the first season, he needs to be making plays. LaVisca was just a guy. Brenton Strange recently, last year, just a guy. Um, this year, Mason Smith's not even been able to really even get on the field. Javon Foster this year, a day three pick, but nonetheless, a guy who's barely even been active. Um, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, Trent has done some some good things in the draft. I question some of the free agent signings. Um, have been probably uh, he did have one good class, but I think after that it's been very uh, the, very checkered. The problem is, and some of this is 
I mean, your roster construction is when you're missing on so many draft picks, you got to go to the free agent well at a higher clip. Mm -hmm. So it's not as much, it's, it's, you like to go to free agency with, okay, what's available? Where can we improve? Not, I have to mm -hmm. get this. And when you miss on draft picks, you have to get that because you don't have it coming from somewhere else. So, I mean, it, they're in this weird situation where I think the, the roster has talent. It's solid. Like, all right, uh, here, here's where we'll go with this. I don't it, think it's a teardown job. I, I it's, not, it's not a teardown job, but it, it's not, they don't have necessarily the uh, – the salary cap space to say, okay, well, you got complete autonomy to go and rebuild this thing how you want. Okay, but, okay when, I, when I look at some of the worst teams in the league, when I look at the Panthers and Patriots and Titans. Oh, gosh, yes. And I look they at have the nothing. Jaguars. And I look at the Jaguars and I say, okay, Panthers, Titans, Patriots on one side of the, yeah. the level, Jaguars on the other side of the scale. Okay. And I'm like, the Jaguars are way down. I mean, you know, they're lifting mm -hmm. the other bums up because Jacksonville has enough good pieces on okay. that scale to make this an attractive job. And you say, how is Jacksonville so bad with so many of these solid pieces in place? And I, I don't know. So, so what you're saying is Trent Baalke's done a solid job. I think he has done. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See I, that? There's the double-edged sword. It's true. I mean, it, Trent has done a, a, an average job. I yes. Think. I think his, his – I mean, we got two number one overall picks, and we're saying the Rots just yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, Trayvon's looking better. Um, Trevor has still been a mixed bag. Um, he, he has played better, but he's also looked bad. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it's a combination of everything. There's not one thing I can say has been abysmally bad, Urban Meyer kind of bad, Doug Marone 1-15 in 15 kind of bad. Mm -hmm. It's been just – it's kind of the story of the franchise and its existence. It's been very average – a peak of good, and then mm -hmm. the doldrums have fallen again. All right, so here's, here's what we're going to do. So since I think we've both uh, gotten to the fact that, uh, that, that it's time for a change. I um, think so. I'm not going to put you on the spot to, uh, to uh, rebuild the, the front office and, and everything right now, uh, but, but let's, let's, do, let's do a pair of things. First, Everybody's Christmas list has Ben Johnson on mm -hmm. it, right? Is that fair? He's not coming here. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Okay, and th 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 that's fair. There, yes. th where, where do you think you got a place in mind? You think he's going to go? I would think he would probably go to a more traditional franchise. I would say he would be a Raiders guy. I would. Oh think, no! I, I would think he no. would be a, a maybe a Jets guy, something like that. No. Where you've got. If if you said Dallas, I might have listened maybe a, to maybe you. Dallas, maybe like, Dallas. I, what, what? Okay, so give me your sales pitch for the Jaguars to a head coach. What? What? Where are your your impact players? What you yep. feel good about? Why they should come here? What's your sales pitch for that guy? Because I can guarantee you, the what? What are the Raiders and the Jets gonna sell him? Aaron Rodgers, who's a, who's a thousand years old and looks like it's time to go back to the dark <laughs> place, um, and the Raiders have Max Crosby. Mm -hmm. I'll wait for the rest. Like. It, it, and and then they'll be gone, have gone through two head coaches in two years. You think you think that guy's go, chomping when, at the bit to go to Vegas for that? But no. sorry, if you're looking no. at a franchise where no. you would say the Jets or the Jaguars, I'm going to give you. I mean, Woody Johnson coming into Ben Johnson saying, "Hey, this is what this is what we got to offer: large media market, beautiful new stadium, yes. um, gobs of money, some foundational players on defense. This is what you got to work with." Okay. Same thing with, with the Raiders. Yeah, historically we've not been – we've fallen off since, uh, since Al Davis is gone. But, hey, we're in a new stadium, new city. We're in Vegas. The Sphere is right down here. Come okay. up, we'll give you a membership. I think the, the prestigious NFL franchises would probably be more attractive to Ben. But I do think the sales pitch for Jacksonville is Trevor Lawrence. He's been hmm? – he's been a generational guy, but he's not had the coaching we've seen – the, the flashes, we need you to, to – saw what you've done with Jared Goff. Saw what you and Mark Brunel have done with Jared Goff, by the way. Mm -hmm. And made him into a Pro Bowl, Super Bowl-type quarterback. Um, the, the canvas is there. We're getting a new stadium. Excitement is high. Slate is clean. We've got Josh Hines down, Trayvon Walker. We've got some good pieces in place. Brian Thomas Jr. We've got the pieces. We just – we've got the frame, the good – bones of the house we just need an interior designer to come and make it all over what's the difference between jared goff and trevor lawrence Jared Goff has won jared goff has improved jared goff got out of a bad system and went to another one 
Well, not since Saban mm. since. I mean, Jared Goff was – I mean, he led the Rams to Super Bowl. He did. But – I think, I think he's had the coaching. I think it's been the patience with him, and he's got players around him. I think you just hit it. You, you finally got your way to where I was going with it. Think about this. So when you say two of the, at this point, w- with what we've seen, at least one of the best offensive head coach in the NFL, yep. minus maybe Andy Reid, who's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day, who is it? Hmm. The best offensive head coach? Probably Sean McVay. Jared Goff's yep. head coach. Yep. All right, so Jared Goff starts off with Sean McVay. Sean McVay says, mm, this guy's tough. I can't do I can't handle it. Or Matthew Stafford just can get mm-hmm. us there quicker than Jared. Let's say that. So they switch. Sends Jared Goff to Detroit. Detroit inherits him with Dan Campbell and now Ben Johnson, who is one of the hottest offensive coaches in the league. Jared Goff has gone into two fantastic situations. Mm-hmm. Jared Goff, also a guy, number one overall pick, had some struggles at times in his in his pro career. What's the difference between for Ben Johnson from Jared Goff to Trevor Lawrence? Jared Goff went into two of the best offensive coaching rooms he could possibly go into. Mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence went into possibly the two worst offensive coaching rooms you could go into. Urban Meyer put together an offensive staff of, I, I don't know, and his, uh, Urban Meyer's vision for offense was something. <laughs> and then you bring in Doug, which – to Doug's credit, has won a Super Bowl mm-hmm. and has done some good things, but he puts in a first-time offensive coordinator in place, a guy who also got him fired in Philadelphia and Press Taylor. Yep. Press Taylor's a nice guy, like Press, but just call a spade a spade. I'm just saying you also brought in Mike McCoy. Mike McCoy's done some mm-hmm. good things. Mike McCoy had also been out of the NFL for an extended period. Mike McCoy also, the last time we saw him, was captaining, at that time, the, be- the worst offense in the NFL. That's what got him fired from where he was as a head coach. We hadn't seen Mike McCoy peek his head up since, and then he pops up as a quarterback mm-hmm. coach. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, you see what I'm saying? So, so Trevor, on one hand, has, we're saying, oh, well, where's Trevor at? He's been surrounded by um, incompetence. While Jared Goff, on the other hand, has been sitting in a room full of gold. Mm-hmm. So now you bring Ben Johnson down. If I'm Ben, you're looking at it and saying, all right, well, what's the difference? Is this guy at least had good coaching before I got to him. Trevor, on the other hand, he's just been over here surviving on athletic prowess. Mm-hmm. Um, look, if I'm, if I'm pitching Ben Johnson, I say, okay, you look at the other openings around the NFL. Number one, none of them have a quarterback. Um, while Trevor isn't established, he's locked in. He has the physical talent. He is every bit of as talented as Jared Goff. You can make that work. Um, you have Josh Hines Allen, who's under contract, who's a young up-and-coming pass rusher. He is already paid. You have Trayvon Walker, who's in the building. You can work with that. You have Brian Thomas Jr., who is a who is talented. Mm-hmm. You can work with that. You got a corner on defense. You have a middle linebacker who can figure out your defense on foyer. You, you got pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll have a little bit of money to spend, not a ton. Um, and you're going to have the number one overall draft pick is what it looks like, or at least a top five draft right. pick. Um, so what do you want? You know, okay. So now you, you so you have this core pieces of, of solid guys and you can add that last piece in the draft that can kind of help push you over. You got some solid pieces on the offensive line. Anton's back to playing good football. Um, Ezra Cleveland, when he was healthy, mm-hmm. looked solid. Um, you got Mitch Morris for another year as a bridge center. And you, you make your decision about what you want to do with the other tackle. Do you want to move Anton to left? These are, these are world, world's yours. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Oh, and by the way, you go to Dallas – you go to New York, the media is going to breathe down your throat and they're going to try and eat you alive. And if you, anything, you, your family is, is fair game. We've seen that yeah. in Philadelphia with mm-hmm. the 76ers. You come to Jacksonville, on the other hand, the smallest beat in the NFL. There's only like 15 of us on a big day. I mean, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. Like, this, these things matter. Like, the, in Boston, there's 30 of them and they're all trying to beat them up. Here, there's like 15 of us, and we're like, look, dude, you win nine games. We're over here like, man, build the dude a statue now. Like, no state I, income tax. No, and, and no state income tax. I mean, you want to live on the beach yeah. or you want to live on the strip? I mean, you know, hey, I ain't nothing wrong if you want to go to Vegas, but just know that Vegas uh, shine might wear off because you ain't got no talent around you. All right, let's rank, let's rank some head coaching destinations. The top one's Dallas. Dallas, New York Giants, Jets. What do the Giants Saints, have? 
Saints. What do the What do the Giants Raiders, have? Raiders, Jazz. Those six right there. You want me to rank those rank six? Those. Dallas is number okay. one. The Jags have to be two. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'd say Dallas is one. The Jags are two. Maybe New Orleans three because at least Derek Carr is like a bridge quarterback. I mean, once you get past that, I'd say New York after that because you got to figure out the Daniel Jones situation, but you have neighbors and a couple other things there. Um, Tracy's looked good at running back. Um, who else was there? Did you say the Jets on that list? Yep. Jets, Giants, Cowboys, I'd Raiders. I'd put the Jets under the Giants because you got to deal – like Aaron Rodgers doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers doesn't look good. Why do I want to go deal with that? So, you got some good defense, defense cornerstones there. That's great. What you, what Aaron Rodgers isn't – I mean, Aaron Rodgers is being paid yeah. well. And he doesn't he's, look good. He stinks. And then you're in that New York media market where they come in for your throat, which is fine. Like, that's fair. It's part of the job. They're compensated to deal with that. But that is all goes into the equation. The Titans probably give Callahan – Another year. Maybe. Even if they do, I ain't raking that job high. I mean, to me, the Jets, Titans, Raiders, all those jobs are in the same, like, bucket. It's bad rosters that are in, in the middle of rebuild. They need a quarterback. They need talent that doesn't exist. I mean, some of them will have a little bit more salary cap space than others, but it's not easy to, to, to lure talent to some of these teams when they know you're in a rebuild and the coach isn't on steady ground. I mean, you're going to overpay for guys. Where the Jaguars lived for 20 Many years. years. yeah. So, I mean, right now, if, if the Jaguars did it, I would say they're, they're assuming the Cowboys don't re-up Mike McCarthy, which nightmare scenario that came to my mind was, oh, Mike McCarthy's free. Shot will be like, yeah. just Mike's been successful. Mike Dallas McC- was jealous. Yeah. What was Dallas thinking? Bring him Bill here. Bill Belichick is the GM and McCarthy's head coach. God. Can you imagine that train wreck? I just it, it came to my mind when I saw Mike McCarthy was just gonna it didn't have to be fired, his contract expired. I said, Oh, he's gonna hire Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy's an offensive minded coach who helped develop Aaron Rodgers, who worked with Dak Prescott, led him to a bunch of wins. So I'll be like, Ah, this is perfect. I can the the bad yep. part is I can see it now. <laughs> I can see it now. You really got my guy, okay? <laughs> I got it right this time. <laughs> um look, uh, overall, okay, so all right, we got the pitches, and I think I, I think those are solid rankings. This yep. is, the Dallas job is going to be yep, the job I everybody wants. Agree, because um, they they have superstars yes. on that roster, um, even if it does come with high expectations. So, although Michael Parsons going into a year, do you deal Michael Parsons? That's a question. For, no, you can't. Ah, you never know. They got a lot of high price guys. They, Dak, C.D. Lamb. They've already paid some guys. They do. They do. Okay, so right before we, we started doing this, I was listening to Rex Ryan talk, and he, he was talking about some of the coaching openings and how he saw things and how uh, you got to build pride in the brand. And he was saying how the Lions flipped it around because they went and got Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. Dan Campbell wore that Lions logo. I mean, he mm-hmm. part, of his, part of his story is right. pride in that brand. Um, he's, he was mentioning he connected Aaron Glenn to New Orleans. Uh, he didn't play in or the New Orleans or the Jets. He played for the Jets, didn't play for New Orleans, but was previously on the New Orleans staff um, before going up to Detroit. He also mentioned how Houston got Ryan, Coach Ryan's, mm-hmm. former Houston Texan, right. helped build bride, pride in the brand. I was a player here. This is part mm-hmm. of my part of the DNA. Um, he was saying for the Cowboys, he was connecting Coach Prime. It's Coach Prime. Mm-hmm. Pray for a brand. He's saying, oh, look, these things matter. And that, this is coming from Rex Ryan, uh, former NFL coach, been there, done that, coached in New York with the Jets as a head coach and was relatively successful. Um, the, the Jaguars don't have a, a player that I think is ready for the head coaching job. Not a former player. Mark Renault? Does he, uh, from quarterback coach to head coach? Never know. From quarterback coach to head coach? I, I mean, look, at, it's been done before. From quarterback coach to head coach? I, look, I, I don't know he, if I was ready to go there. He's done a lot with Jared Goff. Uh, he, he has done something with Jared Goff. If you're going to go for a former player that's accomplished as a coach, you go to Keenan first. Keenan first, okay. Ke- He'd be my next, my next Jack, former Jack guy. I, I wasn't ready to go to, go to the <laughs> Mark Brunel for head coach route, but okay. I, I was more so going, okay, maybe the, the Tony in the front office role route, or can you – bring in a Ben Johnson or, or someone and add some former players to the staff mm-hmm. in these roles to help 
build the pride in the brand, to build the respect, the natural respect. Uh, you, you can pop off, but uh, Travis Etienne, for instance, he ain't got no choice but to respect Fred. Mm -hmm. You, you want to be great, man? I did it. I did it in that jersey. <laughs> Man, Let hiring. me know when you reach, when you reach his records. Tapping you know? the pride, huh? You're going for all the pride. Jimmy well, Smith, too. Hey. Well, th th there's not a long list of accomplished guys in, in franchise. That's like I, true. Th and that's not a knock on anybody. Like, I don't think Mojo's getting ready to hop up and decide he wants to be a coach. Might. Could. But, I mean, like, there's Probably been more not. struggles in franchise history than success. So, when you start saying guys that are success stories, it's... Very few. It's a, it's a short list. It's a... It's a short list. So, you, yeah, you tap the pride a little bit because you need to build the pride back into the brand mm -hmm. and, the, and put the pride back into the logo. And, that, and I mean, essentially, that was Rex Ryan's, Ryan's pitch. So I'm, I'm borrowing this. Yeah, okay. I'm borrowing this. This was from Rex Ryan. Um, and he was using this for a pitch for Coach Prime in Dallas. But why not the same thing for the Jaguars? It's a shorter list. And, I mean, maybe Mark Brunel for head coach. Maybe if you can bring Keenan back as the OC. I mean, that, that's a start. Mm -hmm. It's something. And it would drum up interest for sure. Yeah. Then when Jacksonville is 5-12 and 12 in Mark's first year, they pull him out of the pride and say, hey, get on back to, get on back to Detroit. <laughs> well, they fired Tom Coughlin <laughs> twice. <laughs> and they put him in the pride and fired him twice. So, I mean, look, it, you get to keep it in yeah. there. Well, well, no, no. Keep in mind, the construction's coming. That's so just, true. Ah, oh, we just lost your name in the in the construction phase. Oh, oh no, no. Actually, we're we're not putting the pride into the new stadium. <laughs> we're gonna start. A we're new, gonna start a new fresh. Pride. A new pride. <laughs> new pri that, that'll be the pitch. That's right. New, new pride. pride. <laughs> new pride. So uh, it would be vacant for many many years at this rate. <laughs> it would be vacant many years at this rate. So uh, I I don't I don't hate it. Um, and I get something. There's something there with hiring some of the former players and bringing those guys in. Like, look what Dan Campbell did. Mm -hmm. Look what Coach Ryan's has done. Um, a lot of these guys are able because there's there's a, some passion that you got to bring to it. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's a thought. I think if you're building the coaching staff, if you told me that you that there was a coach that could get Mark Keenan and I don't know, is there a defensive guy? Oh, man. That's in the league coaching? Not that I know of. Nothing. No former defensive. I mean, I would say Mike Peterson, but he's not. Give me Al Harris then. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, Al Harris didn't play here, though. Yeah, right. Hey, Mike Peterson could come up to the, yeah, to, Peterson, to the NFL yeah. from Florida. Yeah. Something like that. Eddie Robinson. Know. He's a former Jack linebacker. Yeah. So He's HBCU coach now. Yeah. So, I mean, something, something along those lines. You bring in a couple of former players to help. I mean, build the pride back into the logo. I mean, it's something that, I mean, you, you've seen it for the past couple of years. Doug brought them some success, and it was like they won eight games and got kind of let their foot off the gas. What'd you win? I know. You, know, you Constellation Prize, or first trip to Cabo, because you lost <laughs> all the rest of the games. To, to paraphrase Trent from pre-draft luncheon a few years ago, and I think I asked him about uh, a draft pick, and he said it. We're drafting number one overall next year. I will not be making the pick. So maybe we can hope that if Jacksonville is drafting number one overall next year, that Trent is not making that number Was that from the draft luncheon? Yeah. I need to find that. Yeah. I need to find that. Uh, we'll have to go look up that. I'll have to go look up that. All right. Um, look, the Jaggers play the Lions next. Um, hope. Uh, no hope. No. Okay, not a whole lot of hope. Zero. Uh, they're they're two and eight. We'll keep doing these and trying to uh, find some levity in the yeah. situation and continue to move it forward. We'll see uh, what Shot ultimately decides to do. The bye week is right around the corner, so if there was a time to make a change, um, that would be a good time. So we'll keep an eye on things. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, it, we know it's been a uh, bad season, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to get yeah, uh, better at any time, but we will keep doing these throughout the off season, so we will start talking draft and free agency yep. and uh, even possible uh, coaching searches. Huh? Hmm. I don't know. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us, and hopefully we'll see you back here next time.